What's up guys, it's Ryan and Eric from Tower Reviews and today we're going to be doing a comparison of three iPods. We've got the iPod Touch 5th generation, iPod Touch 4th generation, and iPod Touch 3rd generation. All of these are 32 gigabytes. Alright, so there's a uh, screen cover over the 3rd generation uh, screen just to throw that in. Okay, so let's go into settings and make sure the brightnesses are all about the same so we can get an accurate reading of the display quality. Alright, so we have them about a quarter of the way up on each. And we are looking at um, iPods with three distinctively different displays. On the third generation, we have a 480 by 320 pixel resolution, which comes out to 163 pixels per inch. On the iPod Touch fourth generation, a 960 by 640, which comes out to 326 pixels per inch. Another thing to note about that is that it's not an IPS display. And then if we move on over to the fifth generation, we have the same pixels per inch, but a slightly different resolution at 1136 by 640, because obviously you have the four inch retina display on the uh, fifth generation. And it's also IPS, which allows it to look a lot better. Um, I was honestly surprised to see how much improvement they had in this iPod Touches display. It's almost exactly the same as the iPhone 5, and it's just very colorful overall and looks uh, very nice. So from an internal spec standpoint, we've got the Samsung ARM Cortex processor in the iPod Touch 3rd generation with 600 megahertz. We've got the A4 single core processor at 800 megahertz, and we've got the Apple A5 chip which comes in at 1 gigahertz and it's a dual core processor. We've got 512 megabytes of RAM in the 5th gen, 256 in the 4th gen, 256 in the 3rd gen as well. Alright, so now let's take a look at the hardware differences. We'll start out with the 3rd gen because that's the first one to come out. Um, it's very rounded uh, stainless steel backing, the shiny uh, material that scratches instantly as you can tell here it looks very bad after mm, probably three years of use uh, we've got the Wi-Fi antenna at the top and that's about it we also do have the gigabyte marking here just to show that it is actually a uh, third generation on the top you have the power button on the left hand side with nothing else um, on the uh, right side nothing left side volume rocker bottom you have the 30 pin dot connector 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the speaker also comes out of that hole there. On the front there is no camera, there's nothing other than the home button. On the fourth gen, you can see that we do have the chrome backing. It's not as scratched, but don't be fooled, it will be scratched soon. This just happens to be a new iPod Touch fourth generation. 32 gigabyte, uh, 0.7 megapixel rear facing camera with mic. The Wi-Fi antenna is not actually present, although there still is one. There's the sleep wake button on the top. Um, as you can see, it's very rounded edges, but they do flatten off, which makes it somewhat hard to press buttons. Just a note. Volume rocker, 30-pin dock connector, 3.5mm headphone jack speakers come out of a specified area right there. And uh, 0.3 megapixel front-facing camera. Both cameras, or this camera records in 720p, this camera is VGA, and the home button. On the 5th gen, this is a uh, pretty radical redesign to the iPod Touch lineup. You don't, you no longer have the stainless steel back. You have the uh, brushed aluminum, I would say. It's, Great change. Uh, yeah, it doesn't scratch. It still looks the same as when I took it out of the box. You still, you, uh, the Wi-Fi antenna is back. You have a 5 megapixel iSight camera, LED flash, um, microphone. You have the loop now, which is a nice feature for um, attaching a lanyard. No gigabyte marking. Lightning connector, which is also new. You've got a five hole speaker port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, volume rocker, um, and you have the 1.2 megapixel front facing HD FaceTime camera. Uh, this record the back facing camera records in 1080p, the front facing 720. And you have the new four inch display, which also separates it from these two. So that's about it for the design differences. Um, if we look at them from a thickness standpoint. The third generation is pretty fat when you compare it with the other two. The fourth and fifth are very close. It's actually hard to tell which one is truly thinner. Um, obviously, millimeter difference is no big deal there. Alright, so now let's go ahead and power them down and get to the software speed and see how this hardware affects that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and power down the devices at this time. 
All right, so the third gen got a little bit of a jump, so that's why it all, I mean. Power down doesn't matter. One, two, three. All right, fifth gen is done as expected. Whoa, third gen coming in ahead of the fourth gen. A now we do have. Um, There's considerable lag on the third gen though, and the fourth gen is a little more smooth as it starts up, so that is a little. We do have roughly the same amount of. Uh, apps and songs loaded on. Um, actually the third gen probably has the most out of any of them and it still managed to come in first so um, it's also not running the same operating system which is something to note. It's at its max update capacity which is 5.1.1 while these are running 6.0.1 I believe so um, the operating system might put some strain on the fourth gen. Also I'd just like to mention that we will be doing a comparison with all the generations of iPod Touch. We're just trying to get our hands on a for or a second gen. We have the first gen here. Yeah, so go figure. Probably the easiest one to get is the one we don't have. Alright, so we're gonna run Geekbench. Here there it is. Alright, so Geekbench basically just gives you uh, a way to pretty accurately compare s internal specs with yeah, no... It assigns a number to the performance. It says it's clocked at uh, 800 megahertz here. So let's run the benchmarks. Okay, so the iPod Touch 5th generation is done with 624. 4th gen is done with 393. And the third gen is done with 292, so you can see a significant improvement, especially between the fourth and the fifth gen. One, two, three, you go. Now the app store on the third gen is a little bit different. Just because of software limitations. Fifth gen was first. Alright, so there's a significant uh, speed difference between the 4th and the 5th, but the 3rd and the 4th actually were pretty similar. Uh, now let's load up the first video. Another thing to note with video watching on the 5th gen is that you're going to get the wider screen, uh, the better aspect ratio so that it fills up the entire screen, uh, no black bars. All right, fifth gen was done first. Actually, not yet. All right, now it is. Let's scroll. What the fourth gen sucks. All right, let's scroll around. No problem on the fifth gen. Some drop frames on the fourth gen, but really good overall. Um, yeah, delay on the third gen, definitely. One, two, three. Pop cap.
the iPod Touch 5th generation does have Siri, which none of these do have, and overall it just feels a lot nicer, it's a lot lighter in pretty much every aspect. If you're looking to save some money by going with the 4th gen, I believe it's $200 for 8GB. Honestly, I if you could spare the uh, extra $100, it's definitely worth it to go with the 5th gen, as the display alone I think is worth it, but um, just... You get the extra storage as well as the upgraded specs, and there's really and the, too many features to count. Thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.